Howdy guys, Pewins back, and I'm here today to give you a guide for the quest mechanics in Bandlord Online. As well as show you guys the different quests that you can perform as of the current build of the mod. Right now there are only a handful of quests implemented, and completing this quest is actually pretty enjoyable and rewarding. So we are currently in Hassenfolk, and I'm just going to approach the thief to get the first quest. This guy is actually like a legit swindler, so he will sometimes not give you a quest even if he takes your money. Well met, thief. Okay, looks like he's willing to give us some information for 100 dinars. We'll pay him that. Okay, looks like he's given us a chess hunting quest, which is actually pretty good. Alright, we can just go on ahead and eat ourselves out of here. I am now outside Hassenfolk and looking at my quests, mm, it says that I need to go to Aramank to look for the hidden merchant chest. Aramank is a village near Jacqueline, in the Vlandian territory, which is on the other side of the map. This will take a while before we arrive. When you see how large the map is, and how many players you get to see going about their own day, just give you the sense of realism in this mod. The guy on my right is also actually a real player. Pretty cool, not gonna lie. And after a day's worth of traveling, we're already here outside the village of Aramank. Let's just go on ahead inside and look for the hidden chest. And there's another player. And so we are now at the village of Aramid. So there can be a number of places where the chest might be hidden, and I usually begin to look for it at the mountains left of the village, because it usually spawns there. If it's not there, we can begin to look for it behind the houses in the village. So you need to check the sides of the houses. And it can also sometimes spawn in the houses across the bridge, so you can check there as well if you can find it. And as I am recording this audio, I'm actually really sad that I fell asleep during last night's event. I had my alarm set already, but I guess I was just too tired to wake up again. Okay, so it looks like we got lucky this time, and the chest was hidden near where the spawn was. Alright, let's see if we find anything good inside the chest. Let's see, we have the Trader's Book and three Helmets. Not the best loot, but the helmets can still be sold in the market. First quest complete, and we can now go on and continue on our journey. As usual, there are many players near Sarga. After retrieving the Trader's Book, the quest updates and says that we need to go back to Hazenfolk and return the said book to the thief. Let's just check if we still got the book. So I'm thinking we can do a few more quests on the way back, and we can... Start a quest by reading one of Maybon's notes that we have in our inventory. And there we go, Lost Treasures of Maybon's quest activated. Okay, so the Lost Treasures of Maybon's is apparently near Varcheg, which is in Sturdia, north of where we are right now. And I want to take this time to say that I really hope you guys give this mod a try. I'd say that 90% of enjoyment of this mod comes from interactions with other players. So, um, with the notes quest, we need to find the bandit hideout, which is usually near the villages. So for Varcheg, we will look around Karkrev and Kranirog. Hmm, apparently it's not in Karkrev and also not near Kranirog, so uh, let's see if it's near Rodabas. And I recommend you guys bring any ranged weapons like harpoons or bow when clearing the hideouts. And there it is, the bandit hideout! Okay, so entering the hideout, we have an option to attack or quit. I'm going to attack. And now you are given the option of which unit you are going to bring inside the hideout. Choose wisely because you can only bring a handful. I usually bring my Asurai veteran infantry because of their javelins. Okay, let's order our units into shield wall. Get them, boys! And see, I'm also getting a fair bit of kills with my javelins. Alright, that was a bit too easy for my taste. Let's try another hideout. Alright, we've cleared it and we've got rubbish loot.
That was kinda disappointing. I wasn't expecting much, but I was hoping to get more than just rugs. Now we can just go on ahead and try reading Maybon's diary, which is a bit harder, but I'm hoping we can get better loot from it. Okay, so the next quest is near Dunglanis, which is actually pretty near from where we are. Hmm, so we got a bit lucky this time, as the hideout was already on our way towards Dunglanis. Hang on inside, you see I don't have enough preparation. Preparation basically dictates how far you will spawn from the enemy, but I will proceed because I'm confident my infantry can take care of the enemy. Okay, for this fight, I highly recommend that you bring tier 5 units as the enemies that will spawn here will be a bit stronger than before. Away with you, vile beggar! You can see that these guys have javelins, which can one-shot my units if they were not holding their shields up. Uh oh, these guys are getting close. Time to bring out the cleaver. So it seems to me that the most effective way to clear out these hideouts is with heavy infantry that have skirmish capabilities. Kinda like my Azurai veteran infantry or the Sturgeon heavy axe, which I bet will also do. Okay, let's just rush these guys with my cleaver. Alright, we just gotta need to teabag this guy for good measure. And kinda seems that we aren't lucky today as we just got a makeshift kite shield, which is I doubt any players would buy. Before going back to Huzzan Folk, I wanna stop over Poros to get one of the barman quests. This has the lowest difficulty level of all the hideouts quests. And so I recommend newer players stick with this, until they get tier 5 units and higher scout skills. Okay, so the barman offered us 1800 dinars to deal with the problem. Let's just go outside and look for it. If you guys are having trouble looking for hideouts, there's this map that the community made which will show you exactly where each hideouts are. I'll just leave the link in the description if you guys need it. So this hideout can spawn in the forest just outside of Poros. And if it's not there, you can go ahead and look for it near Kanaros village. And I'm sure my guys will just wipe the floor against this bandit, so I'm not really concerned that we'll lose. And so since this isn't as hard of a hideout, I think I'll experiment a bit and bring some of my crossbows to see how good they will do. The community is very vocal of what they want from this mod, and a lot of people want to clear out these hideouts with players and not AI. And from my experience, the development team of this mod is good at listening to players' feedbacks, and so we never know. It might be implemented if a lot of people want it. I'll leave the link of the Discord server as well in the description if you guys want to leave feedback for the mod. And being as this is basically Bannerlord Online but in an MMO, a lot of player interaction and diplomacy goes on in the Discord server. And people like to meet in general chat, which is also fun as well. Okay, and looking at the loot, uh, this is actually the first time I found a padded coif like this, and we got another Mabon's diary. That's pretty nice. Alright, so we can now go back to the barman and tell him I cleared that hideout for him. And for completing this quest, I got around 1800 dinars for the barman. It is actually past midnight in UTC time, so there's only a few players in the European server, and so it's a perfect time to farm large bandit stacks, so you won't need to compete for them. Okay, so we just need to catch up to these bandits, and Bandlord Online is such a beautiful game, I'd sometimes just look in the scenery and get distracted while playing. Okay, let's tell our units to move back a little, have my shields in the front, and crossbows behind them. And I'll probably lead my cavalry for a charge to distract the enemy.
so you see here that I'm racking up a lot of kills with my harpoons as they are usually a one hit kill for bandits who aren't wearing armor. Hey what's up guys, it's Scarce here. And sadly I died this time but what's important is that our units stay alive and we actually got a Norse axe which can be sold in the artisan shop. Okay before ending the video I'm going to do one more quest which is the less risky one. It doesn't require you to fight any bandits and you just need to sell some loot. So I went back to the thief off screen and he told us that the village of Kabla needed help selling their wheat. Okay, and we're already here in the village of Kabla. Let's just approach the headman and talk to him about the wheat. I heard that your village needs some help. So we'll agree to sell the wheat and he will pay us 4,700 dinars for our trouble. We'll just have to give him a down payment. So now we need to go to the trader in Razi to sell the wheat. It's usually pretty quiet in Azurai cities but there can also be a lot of players here during the events. This was recorded during the recent Wanderer event. I wasn't able to buy a chainmail armor for my horse. I have wheat for sale from one of the villages. Alright we got our money. And finally, to end our journey, we will go back to the tavern at Hazenfolk and return the trader's book and get a reward from the thief. Man, that was a long day of questing. Okay, let's hope that the thief hasn't forgotten our reward. We can sit here and relax for a bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I highly recommend you guys to check out this mod. This is honestly one of the most addicting MMORPGs that I have ever played. And the community is pretty fun to play with. I have accumulated almost 400 hours in this mod and I don't see it slowing down soon. <laughs> Looks like my break is over and I need to build more farms for Orgrimmar.